Welcome or welcome back if you're returning. My name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then you should subscribe because that's what we do here. Also, don't forget to like this video because that super helps us out. Out in the middle of nowhere. Well, if it isn't the great warrior of light herself, she who slew the dread worm Nidog, bringing an end to a thousand years of war, and my very livelihood. Well, go on, then. Strike me down and finish the job. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> Stab me right in the heart. I'll even lend you my spear if you like. After all, I won't be bloody needing it. Dude, I think you might be overreacting just a teeny tiny bit. Bah! Tell me true. For a moment I had you fooled. <laughs> wow, that was the worst joke I've ever heard. Ye gods. As if I could hate the woman who rid us of Nidhogg. Oh, unless you worry that business about me losing my livelihood couldn't have been further from the truth. In point of fact, peace is proving surprisingly lucrative. As our nation's ties with race mongers brood have grown stronger and our interests in Dravidia have begun to expand, we have seen a marked increase in the number of travelers on the road. Needless to say, said travelers require protection which we are only too happy to provide. Granted, such work will not earn you a lordship like slaying a dragon might, but it pays well and is far less prone to end in incineration, which seems a reasonable enough compromise, all things considered. As long as there are wars to fight, there will be those who take up arms not out of hatred or even a sense of duty, but for want of better employment. When presented with an alternative, such individuals may gladly trade their swords for scythes, or, failing that, pledge them to a more worthy cause. So that the matter lasts, death giving you trouble. A journey of remembrance, eh? Gods, it feels like only yesterday that Azale turned up in Tailfeather with you in tow, back into our lives and gone all too soon. Did I ever tell you how we found her, five years back? In a torpor, out in the forest, all by her lonesome. Aye, well, we weren't about to leave her there, so we carried her back here and tended to her till she woke up. Didn't say a word for days, Isale. Just sat there and stared up at the sky as if the ground held nothing for her. And it did it, we learned, when she finally spoke. Now you might think she's not one to smile, but if you'd seen her in those years that followed... <sighs> the one day, all of a sudden... She says she's got a truth that must be shared, up in leaves for the gods nowhere. And that was the last we heard of her, for a time. Redemption's not beyond us, friends. Come and hear the truth. Come and hear the Lady Iceheart speak. And they did, from far and wide. Or so the story went. Some said there was nothing in it, but I knew. I knew. I think, Burr, that deep down most folk want to do right by themselves and by others. And they try, oh how they try. You do, certainly. And so did she. Oh, thanks. Means a lot to me. Apologies. You came here to think on your own memories, not listen to mine. I take it the Nath are next? Right then, if we're to do this properly, you'll need to gather up your incentives. Same as before. In case you've forgotten, that's a basket of fresh kelum tree fruit, a good sized jar of land trap nectar, and a dirty great cartload of young Nanaka, young Nanka flesh. What? I don't remember all that. Ack! Come on, lass. Surely you can't be that bloody daft. You're more than welcome in their village already. Safe travels. Okay, you got me. It's a joke. You know, everybody's busting my legs. I only got two of them. Don't do it. Click, click. Hunter of dragons and gods, I bid you welcome. What would you ask of me this eve? Once we have had no conception of what you speak, the one mind does not forget but we do it can be most distressing to remember is not enough one must strain and give words to memory and inscribe words upon parchment this is the chronicler's calling he wrote of how you came to loth asked bath and how you left to slay ravana and how the young hunter trained with the old hunter while you were away we shall treasure these memories the history you have given us and when new vath join us we shall share it with them as well Bound no longer to the will of the many, they were now free to walk their own path. Thus reborn, they would write the first chapter of a new history to be passed on to future generations. And as their culture grew older and richer, so too would their story. 
Friend of Isael, warrior of warriors, thou art ever welcome in Annex Tribe. What bringeth thee to us this night? There is much wisdom to be gained from looking to the past, to walk half-remembered paths and mark anew their twists and turns. We too do this, though not through pilgrimage, nor less the written word beloved of thy historians. In song do we preserve the deeds of our lost, and chronicle the passing of the ages. Naught hath greater power to stir our hearts. T'was a dirge of profoundest sadness that roused Needhog's brood to action, a dirge which soundeth no more. Now a new song riseth to fill the void, one of hope rekindled, of war's end and peace's rebirth. I shall sing of thee and Isael ever after, that all may know and remember. In the chorus, the falling could rise once more, for none are dead whose names yet echo in the heavens, and the song would not end until the last voice fell silent. Heroes and villains, sinners and saints, all would live again. Their, so their music and their sounds. Well, yank my palm and call me a mobat. You want me to, to what? I certainly wasn't expecting to see you today. Still calling yourself Burr. Er, not that there's anything wrong with that, Kubo. Uh, anyway, what are you doing here? Thank heavens for that. I was sure you were going to ask for help with yet another one of your irks. Irks exciting quests, but by all means, we'd love to pass the time reminiscing about the good old days. <laughs> and what better than now, Koopo? What with your friends visiting and I'll wait here and I'll fetch them. Well? Oh! Full glad am I to see you again, Burr, and in Mongolm of all places. Kabumbo, it really is you, and just when we were about to leave. I think it's wonderful, this pilgrimage of yours, a final reflection upon the past, that you might face the future with eyes unclouded and a heart at peace. Few would deny that the events of recent days warrant such contemplation. When last we stood in this place, I dare say none among our number would have believed what was to follow, young Estidian least of all. Upon learning what befell him at Azizna, I confess I thought him lost. But when Master Alphino told me of your great struggle and of his salvation, I was reminded of your talent for the impossible. If you ask me, he seemed altogether too stubborn to die. Though I suppose it is no small feat to evict a spite-filled worm once it has made its home in a one's head. Uh. <laughs> With Nidhogg's passing, the children of Ishgard and Dravidia may at last look to the future. It is my hope, however, that they will not forget the deeds of history nor the many thousands of lives lost in their conflict. For only through remembrance will they avoid the mistakes of the past. We thank you again for your hospitality, Chieftain Moglin, and pray that you will one day allow us to extend you the same courtesy. I wish you well on your journey, Burr. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. Until we meet again, Kupo. Even in the farthest reaches of distant, dangerous lands, one may chance upon a friendly face. Though given to mischief and largely unconcerned by the troubles of the outside world, they came to understand Ishgard's plight and agreed to lend their aid. Eventually, that is. The crackling warmth of Alphino's campfire, the savory waft of Vizel's bubbling stew, the soft snoring of Boghead asleep on the grass. A cold wind blew that night as well, and on the morrow they mounted the steps and blew the horn. But having climbed to the summit with hope in their hearts, they descended dejected, weighed down by truths too grim to contemplate. You there! Over here! Quickly! <gasps> Potato! Hee hee hee! I should have known you would see through my disguise, but enough talk. We cannot li linger here lest the guards recognize their sultana. That is adorable. As you may have deduced, I was 
take you in the air outside the palace when I saw you standing there, staring off into space. Have you something on your mind? I understand completely. So much has happened. So much has changed. And all in so short a space of time. Even now, I struggle to make sense of it all. But one thing, at least, is abundantly clear. I owe you an immense debt of gratitude for all you have done on my behalf, or on behalf of those whom I hold dear. After I woke, Papa Shan told me everything. It was a lot to take in, but nothing could prepare me for what Lord Lolorito had to say. <clears throat> that ruthless, manipulative swine came before me and expressed regret for what had come to pass, and thinking to make amends, offered all of Teleji Adeleji's assets, as well as half of his own personal fortune, to the crown. And I accepted. Long did I debate how best to use this wealth. There is no end to the troubles facing our nation, and no shortage of worthwhile causes. Yet none among our people have suffered more than the refugees. And it is they who shall first be, or who shall be first to receive aid and succor. There is also the matter of the terrible wrongs committed against you and yours, for which I am in large part responsible. Nay, do not protest. It is the truth. Accordingly, I have set aside monies to aid in the Scion's rebuilding, if you would have them. No, we're taking the money. Say yes, thank you. <laughs> About time we got some kind of payment. Pray do not thank me, not after all you have suffered. And know that I do not think to atone for my mistakes with money. It is but a tool which I would see put to good use. Oh, listen to me. So much for enjoying a moment's respite outside the palace walls. It rather seems as if I have brought my responsibilities with me. I suppose I should return. <coughs> Lady Lalira! Lady Lalira! You must come home at once. Father is worried sick, you know. Gah, confound it. You lot, search this area. I know she came through here. On the other hand, it is essential that a ruler see firsthand how her subjects go about their daily lives, and I have not visited the markets in weeks. It would seem a shame to let this opportunity go to waste. Burr. Might I impose on you to have a brief yet cordial conversation with those Sultan Swarm? I have the choice of subject matter up to you. Or leave the choice. <laughs> Take care. I didn't ask for this. Ah, I beg your pardon, miss, but did you perchance see a young Lalafelin -la -la woman, noble woman, pass this way? Are you certain? Oh dear, oh dear. Master Papa Sean said this might happen, but I never truly believed he was serious. Oh wait, I know you. You're Burr, Berlin. What a stroke of luck. I can't think of none better qualified to help us. You see, it is no mere noble woman that we seek. Ah, but Master Papashan was most explicit about the need for secrecy. Pray forget I mentioned it. We will find the sir. We will find the lady on our own. What cruel fate to lose her father as a child and be compelled to rule in his stead, and how the years had tempered her dreams and taught her something, sometimes brutally, the price of naivety. Though outwardly unscathed by her ordeal, it was a wiser and more wary Nanamo who reclaimed the throne. There you are, Burr. <clears throat> Higuri told me of your pilgrimage. I knew it was only a matter of time before you sought me out. I too have been reflecting on the choices which shaped my path. When I took through to the road with my grandfather, when I joined the Crystal Braves, when I tried and failed to warn you before the banquet, I had my suspicions about Wilred's death, that it was the work of a Garlean spy within our ranks, but I could not be sure who was involved, hence my desire to speak with you in private. Oh yeah, that poor guy. That was really sad. I'm so bummed out he was murdered. Poor guy. I thought long and hard about how to approach you without arousing suspicion. Mayhap too long. Eventually, I decided to arrange a meeting through Mistress Mowodi. Little did I know that bastard Laurentius had seen me do it. Shortly thereafter, the fourth received urgent summons. Needless to say, I had no choice but to answer, and soon found myself at the mercy of Captain Ilburn's band of traitors. They confined me to the Rising Stones, along with others till, still loyal to the Scions, Rion, Ifibi, 
Argus quite what they planned to do with us, I couldn't say. Mayhap they thought we would turn, given time. The fools. Lieutenant Yu Yu Hase bid the third keep us under constant guard, but when Captain Ilburn moved to carry out General Robin's execution, they were forced to withdraw all but a token force, which we took by surprise one night, and then it was over. One might argue that it turned out better than it had any right to, all things considered. Still, there are nights when I lie awake wondering if I had done things differently, if I had been more careful or more decisive, what then? But there is naught to be gained from thinking thus. We must count our blessings, must we not? We are still here, and most of what we was broken can be rebuilt. You will see, Burr, you will see. For the freedom of all, it had begun with an oath and ended with a betrayal, as the conspirators turned on their comrades for coin and country. The good and true were beaten and imprisoned, or else butchered where they stood, but even in their darkest moments, they never stopped believing that the dawn's light would shine again. I'm starting to miss, uh, Alfie. Okay, weirdo. Why, hello there, Burr. Fancy meeting you here. Wedge. Peace. Reminiscing about the glory days, eh? Aye, we spent many a sleepless night hammering away in that corner of ours. How's your mana cutter holding up, by the way? Beautifully. Ha! That's good to hear. Not that I had any doubts. Like, uh, our craftsmanship's second to none. <clears throat> Quite right. It will take more than swirling winds and raging dragons to bring her down. And that, my friend, is an ironworks guarantee. Speaking of which, on the back of the field test success, we've ahead, gone ahead and licensed the design for mass production. Soon the Sky Steel Manufactory will be turning out metal cutters by the dozen. Which is why we're here today, as a matter of fact, to make sure their machinists don't bugger anything up. Apparently, adventurers have been queuing up to place an order, and even some sky pirates. Ah, just imagining the sea of clouds teeming with our creations fills me with a father's pride. Right then, that's enough patting ourselves on the back. We've got to make sure the cutters are up to snuff, or Jesse will never let us hear the end of it. From now till we finish, there will be no more breaks, distractions, and not one wink of sleep, do you hear me? Oh, bubble, bubble, and cart chocobo. <laughs> Well, we'll leave you to it. Till next time, eh? Despite the many hardships they had endured, or perhaps because of them, they greeted every new challenge with a smile. Their workshop, their battlefield, their tools, their weapons, they invariably rose to the occasion, delivering ingenious solutions to seemingly insoluble problems. That's right. Through tempestuous winds they carved a path, breaching the dread worm's sanctum, and there did they put him to the sword. Yet in the wake of hard-fought victory were sweet secrets laid bare in a vision dark and disturbing. The legacy of the fathers bequeathed to their sons and passed down through the generations, old blood enduring in the new, the mark of original sin. And there she is at last. Jibril said you were wandering all over, reminiscent about days gone by. Seems a bit soon, if you ask me. It's not like I don't understand, though. Some days I'll be walking through this broom, same as normal, and it'll hit me all of a sudden just how much has changed for us. No, I know it's a bit different from what you've been through. Puts me in mind of the first time I saw her and her friends up near the etherite being shown around by that house foretop man. Oh, you never told me you'd met before. <laughs> if it weren't so much, uh, it weren't so much a meeting as heckling, to be honest. When I heard their guide warning them off paying a visit to the broom, it stuck in my craw. And you've got to admit that Master Alphano is a spitting image of a snotty little lordling. 
a little lordling that went on to fight two knights of the Heavensward with Burr here in a trial by combat, not to mention helping retake the vault from the true brothers. Yeah, leave him alone. Fury have mercy, it feels like a bleeding lifetime ago, don't it? Cause it was. What we got now is nothing like what came before. It's a bleeding rebirth is what it is. Cold comfort to the folk who died getting us here. Still, this piece is ours and we do owe it to ourselves to make the most of it. Meaning we've got to work twice as hard to make the broom a better place and no more harassing blue bloods neither. Yeah, dad. Aye, aye. A world apart from the opulence of the pillars, they had toiled, shrouded in the haze of the broom. Sentenced to a life of hardship by birth, they dreamed of a revolution as children dream of fairies. Then one came and went, and they suddenly found themselves with a seat at the table. Ho! Clouds part and let shine brilliant sun upon Lanuvanu. Great netherling warrior returns to Akzundu on a, and on pilgrimage of remembrance. Well, well. Know that we will always be grateful to you for your victory over the ravenous white. No longer need we fear for the safety of our smallest islands. But Lanu Vanu is not one to forget Netherling's first coming, when she saves us from certain death at the hands of the Black Ones, distant memory though it is. Yes, her many deeds are the stuff of legends. We shall remember the stories of the hero's name, Berlin, for they are worthy of a celebration now and ever after. An earnest, good-natured people, they had been borne witness to the rage of their beloved god's twisted manifestation, and proclaimed it to be false. By the grace of kind travelers were they duly delivered from its wrath, the mad god's death signaling the birth of a new hero. Well met, Burr, what brings you here this day? Indeed, though it seems an age, it was not all that long ago that we rescued Stola from the live stream. How quickly we begin to forget even those memories most precious to us. In my defense, I might add that I have rarely missed an opportunity to make new memories with my sister in the days since her return. Our conversations are largely on matters of scientific and professional concern. Ancient Alagon technologies, primals, Asians, and so forth. She has an insatiable thirst for knowledge, as you know. Yet while I understand her desire not to burden those around her with her troubles, and to carry on as she did before, I do worry that her willingness to manipulate her own ether to compensate for the loss of her sight may have dire repercussions. Whoa, she's blind! Whoops! She never told you then. But of course not, would rather have defeated the purpose. You should know that the technique she employs places a tremendous strain on her body. She is, of course, well aware of her limits, and more than willing to ignore them should she, see, should she deem it necessary. I pray you see that she does not. Regrettably, she is wont to ignore my advice when it does not suit her. Yet, given your shared experiences, mayhap she will be more willing to heed your warnings. Her sister was under no illusions as to the dangers of the life she had chosen. Should the worst come to the worst, Ishtola would do what needed to be done, pay any price, make any sacrifice, and that without hesitation. She was a woman of conviction, deserving of respect and admiration, and no small amount of worry. Oh, Ishtola. Why must governing great gobble combination be so difficult? Like herding corals, stupid corals with muchly differing views on glorious nations' future direction. <laughs> She's like, calm down. Yes, yes, Slowfix knows he is letting emotions run wild. Uplander is welcome voice of reason. Not like when Uplanders first returned to Idleshire, yes? So much venom in that one's tongue flaps, calling Gobby Flock thieves. But Slowfix saw way to mutual understanding. Citizenship in society, first step in strengthening communal ties. Give all vested interest in continued prosperity of egalitarian utopia. And now, Slowfix bids Uplander fulfill civic duty as citizen of Idleshire with hand lending of great import. In cave south of settlement lives Old Crone, wielder of powerful magics used to crafty make frogmen that chase away curious gobbies. Uplander has made many busy deals with Old Crone, yes? Then Uplander can appeal to Crone's better nature and make her call off frogmen harriers. 
Yeah, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right, from uh, all of us to all of you, <laughs> bye.